Hello, this video will take you through an example of how to solve a trigonometric equation that where the ratio in the equation contains a phase shift. So here we're solving the equation cosine of x minus pi over 3 is equal to negative a half. So here we have the ratio is already isolated. Uh, so we look at this ratio of negative 1 over 2 and recognize that the cosine ratio is negative. in quadrants two and three. And so we draw in our Cartesian plane that we're gonna have solutions in quadrant two and in quadrant three. And both of those will have the same related acute angle beta. And we write the cosine ratio for beta using the positive ratio, so one half. On my diagram, I'm going to label my two solutions. So the first one in quadrant two is going to be not just x1, but I'm going to write it as x1 minus pi over 3, because that's the entire angle here. So I want to make sure I'm considering that minus pi over 3 part when I come up with my solution for x1, similar to our example with double angles. Similarly, the solution in quadrant 3, I'm going to label that one as x2 minus pi over 3. So we first solve for beta, and I recognize that one half comes from our special triangles. And so from our special triangles, we know the cosine ratio of pi over 3 would be equal to one half. So beta must be pi over 3. And from our diagram, putting beta back into our diagram here, that gives us that theta, sorry, x2, what am I doing? x1. minus pi over 3, so that's our first angle there, is going to be equal to pi minus beta, so pi minus pi over 3. And to get our solution for x1, we just need to solve this equation for x1. So I add pi over 3 to both sides to get pi minus pi over 3 and then plus pi over 3 which means that x1 is equal to pi. I do a similar thing to solve for x2. So we have that x2 minus pi over 3 is going to be equal to, where this orange arc is here, pi plus beta. So pi plus pi over 3. Again, I add pi over 3 to both sides to get x2 equals pi plus pi over 3 plus another pi over 3. And so x2 would then be equal to 5 pi over 3. Okay. Similar to uh, when we were solving trig equations involving double angles, uh, we want to check and make sure that there's no other possible solutions between 0 and 2 pi. Um, when we have a phase shift like this, we just want to double check and make sure that even after that phase shift happens, that our solutions are still within the bounds for the question. So first of all, we check and make sure both x1 and x2 are in fact between 0 and 2 pi, because 2 pi would be equivalent to 6 pi over 3, so x2 is still a little bit less than that. Uh, but we also want to make sure that there's, because of that phase shift to the right pi over 3, we want to make sure that uh, there's no other solutions in between 0 and 2 pi. So if we did draw a quick sketch of this function, y equals cosine of x minus pi over 3, we would get, I'm just going to draw a very quick sketch here, we would get a graph that looks something like this, and you can check this by graphing this on your own, uh, where about here is 2 pi, and half of that is pi, so that's about here. And so we want for when that function is equal to negative a half, that would solve this equation. So if I draw in where negative a half is, it's approximately here. And we see that the two solutions that we found were at pi and five pi over three. And because this curve hasn't yet come back down here, uh, bef um, before we go to the left of zero, uh, there are, aren't any other solutions, but it's possible that just because of that shift, we may have had another solution that was close to zero here. 
um, but in this case we don't. Um, but you do want to check that graph just to make sure that you haven't missed any other possible solutions. And if you did miss a solution, then you would um, be able to use your graph to figure out the location of those solutions. So for example, if there was another solution to the left of pi, it would be um, this x2 value that we found. Subtract the length of one period would be where the function would again uh, intersect between cosine of x minus pi over three and y equals one negative one half. Um, so you could use the length of a period to try and figure out other solutions if you knew that you had other solutions. In this case, we only have the two solutions to this equation, which are x1 is pi and x2 is five pi over three. 